Greetings, this is Jared Love, and in this video I will be going over how to do some speed test comparisons within Maya. I've gotten a couple of questions on the constraints, uh, the matrix constraint videos that I did uh, where people are asking uh, how much faster the matrix constraint is than Maya's default constraints. Uh, and there was another video of um, or actually, I guess a uh, comment conversation where someone was asking about aim constraints. So I'm going to show the aim constraint in this one. I'm not actually making a a matrix node constraint system for an aim. I'm just going to show how uh, pruning it would be a little bit faster than just leaving all of the connections on it. So this is a really simple scene. You know, I've got the cone and it's aim constrained towards the cube and the cube just has some keys on it to move it around so you know very very simple you can see obviously the um, this is the default of how Maya's constraints are and I haven't modified any of the connections yet so you what you would do is you would create a scene like this to, you know a simple case for whatever you're testing the speed between you would save it. So this is just one little setup. And if we look at the hierarchy here, it's a very simple hierarchy. I just have an all group collector. Uh, then there's my cube, my cone, uh, or sorry, a group over my cone, which I'm going to be using to get rid of the cycle in the next file. And then there's the cone and its constraint. So very simple. Uh, so what you do is you create that, you save it, and we're going to be utilizing a script here to import a lot of them. So what I do is I save the scene and then I copy that line of text and paste it in here into this file path variable that I store. So real quickly, I'm just going to decycle as much of this constraint as I can. And I'll probably just cut to it being undone. So, okay. So here is the decycled constraint as much as possible. Um, in this case, I had to leave the translates here just for the aim constraint to actually work properly. If you have a situation where your aiming node doesn't actually have to move so like if I was to move move this it would still aim down so if you don't have a situation where that node is going to actually move then you could actually delete that constraint as well but you see what I've done is I've just gotten rid of all of this stuff for the rotate order the rotate pivot the rotate translate which these stuff shouldn't change in your file anyway uh, after it's rigged and then I've taken the parent inverse matrix so I've gotten the actual parent node of the cone and use the world inverse matrix to connect into the parent constraint inverse matrix. So now that I have that, the rest of this file is essentially identical. Uh, it's just has that snipped connections going on. So if I go now and save this, uh, I'm going to just call this one a slightly different name. Okay, so now I have the two files. So I'll then snag this and paste it in here. So now I have my two files. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically go in and import. In this case, I uh, have it set at 200, which is kind of normal for what I would normally test with. Um, since I've done this before and with 200 in the file, it didn't really make that much of a difference. I'm going to bump this up to 500 so that we'll have 500 of these individual setups of, of this inside the file to do the timing test with. It's just kind of like a stress test way of doing it. So in case you're not really familiar with scripting, what this is going to do is it's saying for every iteration of uh, 500, we're going to use the MC file command, which is for opening and closing and uh, saving files, all that kind of stuff. It's going to take the file path that we give it and then it's going to import it. So import equals true. Type Maya binary because these are Maya binary files. Namespace 
I'm going to give it a namespace of uh, test underscore and then an index value for whatever the iterator number is. So it's going to be basically 0 to 499 because of the X range of 500. So I'll start a new scene and then I'll source my first line and then actually I didn't do the import. I've got it already imported, but but if you didn't have it, it would be this, so you'd also want to source that. And then I'm going to import the 500 of the first scene, because that's the, the default aim constraint. And this will take a little bit of time. My has to <clears throat> process all of that, of course. Okay, so I spared you guys waiting for all that to import, uh, but basically what we have now is 500 of these, and that's all that initial setup. So with the, the all node, the cube, the cone, group, the cone, and the aim constraint. And you see it goes to 499. This, this is why I, I put uh, this in here, just so that we could give it a namespace so you can kind of quickly and easily tell how many you've got in there and, and what it's doing. So then what we're going to do is we will use the evaluation toolkit, which you can find under Windows, General Editors, and Evaluation Toolkit right there. And we're going to go down to this validation section, which usually is closed. So then all I do is I will do test performance and it's going to run it through the keys. So that's why you want to have some keys set. Okay, and it is going to do it a few times. Uh, three for each, I believe. And then it gives you this uh, playback speed. So then in DG mode, it's going to be 55 point something frames per second in um, I think this is serial and this is parallel so you see the the um, difference in speeds just between those three different methods now what I'll normally do is I'll actually do this a few times and um, I think I usually tend to do it about four times because if you see the difference in disparity in the DG this time, it goes from 55 frames per second to 90 frames per second just after that one. And I think that's because the first time it runs through, it has to do some extra calculations or something to kind of set up how it's calculating through the graph. So I'll do test performance four times, I'll discard the first one, and then I'll take the last three. And so you see here, there's a, a more similar uh, difference in, in numbers. And then just one more time. So not a, not much difference between them, which is you know kind of what we would expect. So what I'll do then is I'll take all of these three and I'll just kind of copy them and uh, save them somewhere in like another file or something uh, or just down here in in the script editor and <clears throat> i'll make a note that this is for the the first file so whatever whatever it is that we're looking at okay and then i'll clear it again say don't save and then i will source the second file so this is the prune file and then i'll run this again and let it churn. Okay, so what we now have is, again, there's 500 of them, because, you know, again, the first one is zero, so it's zero to 499, which is 500 individual um, copies of this setup. And just run the test again. And I'll probably end up sparing you guys the, the torture of going through this on future <laughs> So, you know, again, we see 54, and then if we run this again, so 90.99. So, so yeah, again, I just kind of do it, you know, several more times, and I'm not actually going to, you know, take the numbers or anything, but uh, what I would do is I would copy this one and 
then I would average those values together for each. So I would know what the average is for the DG for the default aim constraint that's not pruned in any way. I would do the same for the serial and the parallel, get those averages, and then I would do the same thing for the pruned file. And then once you have those numbers, what you can do is you can go to, you know, just do a, a Google search or whatever and find the percentage increase calculator. And what you would do is you would just put in the original or whatever you're using as your benchmark to test from. So in this case, like the, um, the unpruned constraint, you would put in this value here and then the new one. And then when you calculate that, it's going to give you the percentage increase or decrease in speed between the two. So it's a pretty easy way to test it. And, you know, just a, a, a few things to remember about doing this. You just want to make sure you have as close to an apples to apples comparison as possible. Otherwise, your speed difference may be just based on the differences of how you set it up, you know, um, meaning like, you know, in one file you have five keys and another file you've got four keys. So if one is running faster and it's got four keys, maybe it's because you only have four keys on it. So that's why I kind of start with taking that same file. I modify the file, save it again as the other version, and then... Uh, that way, like all the animation is exactly the same and we don't have to worry about, oh, okay, did I get the curves exactly right or whatever the case may be. It's because you're, you're really only wanting to test the difference of that constraint. Now, in this case, if, if you happen to go through and grab those numbers and, and do the tests and all that kind of stuff, you probably see that they're roughly the same. I mean, th in this case, the the pruned constraint is negligibly faster I mean it's it's very tiny um, just because Maya has done a pretty good job of uh, making their constraints fast or at least as fast as possible so it's it's not going to be earth shattering or anything especially when you're considering the frames per second we're seeing is because we've got 500 of them in the scene so if you're looking at just a one one setup to one setup comparison you're not really going to see much of a a speed increase um, with the with the matrix constraints you would definitely see an increase uh, but anyway uh, like I said it's a short and sweet little tip um, so for yourselves if you ever wanted to test the speed of something or you're curious if if I tweak it just a little bit this way is that gonna give me a more speed increase or not that's a it's a nice kind of easy way to test it so Anyway, have a good one and uh, have a blessed day.